Ryan Higgins. All right, rolling along here on this Friday afternoon into evening. This hour brought to you by Laborers Local 663. Getting you ready for Cues of the Jackets tomorrow at 5.30. Yes, again, the game is at 5.30 tomorrow. It's up to the CW. Uh, we'll be uh, for pre-game, pre-game coverage starting here at 4.30. No post-game show uh, tomorrow due to uh, all of the games here happening at once. we got basketball, lacrosse, uh, the crunch. Uh, everything is happening at the same time tomorrow night. We... We ran out of microphones. There's just there's no more microphones. So uh, pregame only tomorrow, but we'll get you covered uh, before the game. Uh, preceding that will be a full rebroadcast of the Cuse Carolina game from Tuesday night starting at 2. But with that, let's go to the phone lines and bring on our next guest today. He is the uh, radio color analyst for the Georgia Tech broadcast, Randy Waters. Hey, Randy, thanks for hopping on. Always great to chat. Uh, good to be with you, Brian. How you doing today? I'm uh, doing well, and uh, you've had an interesting season here to document, have you not, in the, <laughs> the first year uh, of Damon Stoudemire? Uh, can, yeah. can you possibly explain how they have those three league wins that they that they got against probably the best three teams in the league, and, and that is it at this point? Oh, you mean uh, beating the three uh, ACC teams highest uh, among the conference members in the net ranking? Yeah, those three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I cannot explain it. Um, we uh, Andy Demetra and I kind of s- search for answers, and not sure we can figure it out. Well, I am sure we can't figure it out. But uh, you know, they they beat Duke uh, in Atlanta in the first conference game, and went into Florida State. Frankly, I think a young team that was still kind of on cloud nine and uh, Mr. Gravity took over also known as the Florida state speed and depth, frankly, Um, Leonard Hamilton just kept coming at him waves. Didn't handle it well at all. in the first half fell way out of that game. And and Brian, I thought after that two home games, you got BC and Notre Dame tech lost leads in the second half in both those games and got beat, went to Duke actually went it. Went ahead of Duke, had a lead at Duke in the second half, but lost that one. But everybody kind of figured after the double OT win at Clemson, okay, now these guys believe they can win. But then they lost three straight after that before beating Carolina. So, um, I, you know, a psychiatrist might be added to the staff. <laughs> Not, I'm joking about that one. Uh, but nobody can quite figure it out. Let's put it that way. No, it's been one where, like, whenever these results pop up, it's like, wait, what just happened? And then it just keeps happening in the uh, in the games like that. Uh, what do you make of uh, Damon Stoudemire here? Obviously, you know, it feels like we kind of talked about it last year, Andy, wondering if the, the move would be made on Josh Pastner. It, it had grown yeah. a bit stale there <laughs> at, at the end. Obviously, it's some it, it's a rebuild. It's getting things going again. Where, where are people at with Damon and uh, what he's done so far? Oh, I think there's frustration, uh, and I don't think that emanates from high expectations from the outset. I don't think that was the case at all, uh, especially when, um, you know, early early in the season, um, Tech went to Cincinnati, you know, pretty good Cincinnati team, but, but uh, you know, not a, not a top 10 at the moment or anything. And they went to Cincinnati and just got completely blown out. Uh, never in the game. And But in that game, Bind Dongo and Nate George made their debut. George uh, had not played uh, due to just, you know, being a freshman and uh, hadn't earned any, any time yet. And Dongo hadn't played because he'd been hurt, had a hand injury. So they played, got their baptism of fire. And then they, I'm sure, you know, your fans up your direction have noticed sometimes. I mean, they, they've been, you know, ACC Rookie of the Week, each one of them a uh, time or two. And so um, they they have been bright spots. There's no doubt about that. And the thing in the last couple games that has just killed Georgia Tech, uh, opponents, meaning Louisville and Notre Dame, have been to the line 56 times between the two of those teams. 56. And they've shot 86%. Um, gee, Tech can't guard people at the free throw line. We know that. But anyway, uh, Georgia Tech's been to the line 29 times in those two games. So Tech is not putting pressure on, especially on half court defenses. Yes, if they have an opportunity to get some transition going, 
they're pretty darn good in transition. But in half court, uh, we really noticed this uh, at the Yum Center in Louisville, I think for maybe the most noticeable of, of, of the times. It, it, Louisville started picking up Nate George very early, uh, not waiting for him to uh, comfortably get into the offense in the half court game. And uh, that seems to have thrown off Georgia Tech's half-court offense. There's no question. And and uh, then Louisville beat him up on the boards pretty bad, got to the line, and uh, ran away with the game in like the last seven and a half minutes when it looked like Georgia Tech was going to pick up a rare road win. And um, Marcus Burton just basically broke down Georgia Tech's half-court defense uh, and created huge problems, as he did in the game at Atlanta. And I, I think you and anybody who's listening to you all up there, you, you know how quick that kid is and what he can do to you off the dribble. Uh, and as far as uh, getting Notre Dame into their offense, they're, they're starting to feel good about themselves. And Georgia Tech, frankly, is, is um, you know, when they, when they look in the mirror, maybe the doubt monster looks back at them, too. Yeah, well, we'll see uh, Notre Dame uh, in here uh, next weekend and a little J.J. Starling uh, kind of uh, back at his old team uh, game. And the, the Orange certainly are not shy with their guards coming into Atlanta. And, you, you know, it feels like in Syracuse, they, we just talked about this, leading the team, leading the league in steals, Randy. Uh, Georgia Tech yeah. has not always been clean with the basketball. It, it feels like to me anyway that that may be the biggest key to this game, right, if, if Georgia Tech can play a clean game or not. Well, I, I think that is absolutely one of them. I think the other one would be transition has hurt Georgia Tech a lot if if they can keep uh, Cuse from from getting into a transition game and and um, and, and creating easy buckets um, because um, in in the half court um, defensively, you know Tech is Tech's got enough depth to kind of to, to play with you. But in the tra- the transition game has hurt them considerably as well as as the free throw line in the last couple of games and and you know frankly when I looked at Syracuse uh, numbers in in conference play by this time of the season I, I don't pay much attention to anything other than conference numbers right because those numbers mean that you've been going theoretically you've been going up against quality competition game in game out and. In conference only, when you're over nine steals a game, that's that's outstanding stuff uh, that that the uh, Syracuse, that Autry's team ha- has been doing defensively. And I also I also saw a couple of little uh, uh, tidbits about uh, the two three zone is not dead. It has not been uh, put in the archives completely. Is that correct? It it, uh, it has been resurrected uh, of late here, uh, Randy. Uh, in Tuesday night. Uh, against Carolina, it, it was by far the most they played zone this year, and it it worked extremely effectively against North Carolina down the stretch. So it, it felt dead and buried early on, but it, it's made a it's made kind of a surprise comeback here in the last couple of weeks. I, I, I'm not saying I was surprised. I, I was certainly interested in seeing that. And uh, uh, now, did, did Park and Sadlin know that was coming? Did they get? Did they get a tip from the head coach? Yeah, I think they. I think they may have been clued into the whole situation, right? You know that. You know that sense. You know he's he's hanging around. He's picking up these things. So you know, I, I think he probably had that one filed away. Uh, I'm sure he did, but um, that's just another thing for Georgia Tech to to be concerned about as far as trying to get back in gear offensively, and 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 the Jackets have not been, uh, with the exception of Miles Kelly. Uh, times not been very good about uh, being able to get to the line. I mean, they only they only shot eleven free throws um, uh, in the game at Notre Dame and didn't get there very often against Louisville. Louisville shot thirty four free throws in that game. Yeah, this is a crazy amount. You mentioned Miles Kelly and Syracuse fans might duck somewhere after the game he had in the Dome last year to uh, toward yeah. the end of the regular season where he hit seven threes and one for 30. You know, it's a young team right now, right? You mentioned all the freshmen. He, he's the veteran yeah. veteran guy. He's still the leading scorer. How's that mix going with, with Miles leading the way and a bunch of young guys kind of out there with him? I think it's going okay in the sense that they, uh, they do look to him, but also – um, you know, especially again in conference play, um, you know, def- uh, you know, coaches, you know, they they focus on on the defensive end of making sure that Miles Kelly's not the guy that beats him, 
and he almost beat Louisville with 36. Uh, you know, he almost beat Louisville. I don't want to say by himself, but you know, he almost was the key for Georgia Tech. To had a chance to get a win until the last few minutes of the game. Uh, he was phenomenal. Uh, they did dial it up on him in, in the second half a little bit. Again, um, they're, they're they're really, really, really testing Nate George, the freshman point guard, who's um, been a wonderfully pleasant surprise. I mean, he didn't get to campus until like three days before classes started. He reclassified very, very late hmm. in the cycle. Uh, Damon Stoudemire knew of him for quite some time. Uh, because uh, his uncle is uh, an agent. Uh, I don't know exactly what he specializes in, but uh, and Stoudemire has known, known the kid's uncle for a long, long time. Uh, and all of a sudden the kid said, hey, I'm going to request, hey, we got a scholarship. By the way, we have a scholarship. <laughs> so <laughs> come on down. And um, so that's how that worked out. But um, the opposing ACC teams are really trying to uh, – Take Nate out, or not take him out of his game, but but throw throw everything they have at him defensively to keep him from getting into the offense easily. You know, last thought here, Randy. I'm thinking more big picture here. Is uh, Randy Waters is with us from the Georgia Tech radio broadcast? You, you mentioned these young guys in George and and Tongo and Sacco and others that are playing a, a ton of minutes now. Is that like? And encouraging to the future, like oh, all these young guys are getting getting minutes now, or you know, in this in this time of transfer portal and NIL and all all this stuff is like, well, this would be good, but fingers crossed, we'll, we'll see going forward. I, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. I've been talking to you know when Wake came in, uh, talking to their radio crew and 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 our friends. You know, and, and, and Carolina and Duke and so on. Of course, Carolina is a, a little, quote, older team, if you will. I think you'll agree with that. But uh, Baycott's been there 10 years now, right? Uh, but um, the first, not the first thing, but things I think about when I look at these young kids is, okay, they're really shining. Who's going to come after them and come after them hard mm-hmm. uh, with, with, with a bankroll? I mean, do you, and you brought it up, but I, in the back of my head, I was thinking, I kind of like to ask, ask you all, does that go through your head? I mean, oh, of course. When, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I don't know how coaches deal with it, frankly. No, it, it absolutely does. It absolutely does, Randy. It's completely changed here. It's one where it used to be, oh, man, that guy had a nice freshman year. I can't wait to see what his career does. And now it's, well, I hope they got enough money to bring him back for his sophomore year. I, I, I know it's it's uh, it's nuts. Um, I, I do I do know that that those two kids I mentioned, Dongo and, and George, are um, appear to be very happy where they are. But uh, you know, when uh, just happy, uh, that does not eliminate the dollar signs when somebody else comes at you. I guess, but I mean, really, the combination of Sturdivant, the senior. And George, the freshman, uh, when they play them at the same time, Tech has a little more luck, well, or more success, I should say, getting the ball inside uh, to the post to, to guys like Dongo and Tajon Claude and Tafarga Pari. Um, but um, it, it, it's uh, they, they still need Miles Kelly. They still need Miles Kelly to be at the top of his game. If he's not at the top of his game, and if they're not setting screens for him to help free him up, uh, dribble handoff, and, and he, he doesn't have to shoot threes. He's pretty darn good off the bounce, too. But if they can't get him going, yeah, that's kind of two strikes on Georgia Tech right there. Yeah, should be. Uh, you know, both these teams, uh, they've been riding the roller coaster all year long, so it should be a fascinating one uh, tomorrow in Atlanta to see which version of both these squads uh, show up. But, uh, Randy, thanks as always for, for hopping out. Enjoy the game uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon, okay? All right, take care. All right, there he goes, Randy Waters from the Georgia Tech uh, radio broadcast. I don't know. Like This is one of these games. This Georgia Tech team, you look at their three league wins. You say, oh, they only won three league games. That's not very good. Yeah, except they beat the three best teams in the freaking league. It's like, what? They've lost to Notre Dame twice. Twice they lost to Notre Dame. Notre Dame's not good. They're not Louisville, but they're, they're not good. They lost to Louisville. <laughs>
<laughs> they lost to Notre Dame twice. They lost to Louisville. They beat Carolina, Duke, and they won in double overtime on the road in Little John A. Clemson. It makes no sense. So this is a team clearly, you know, all cylinders clicking, capable. It's also a team that put up 92 and beat Syracuse, albeit different coaching staff and a lot of different players last year in the Dome. But uh, you mentioned Sturdivant and Kelly. Those guys combined for, uh, what's it? Oh, yes, 14 threes against the Orange the last time uh, they saw them. So there may be some uh, problematic situations. Apex is of both teams. You probably take Syracuse. Go figure. For us that have watched Syracuse all year, consistency of both teams, you'll probably take Syracuse. Uh, but going to be an interesting, uh, interesting affair tomorrow night. Down in Atlanta. Again, 5.30 is the tip time. Uh, We'll be here with pregame at 4.30. With that, we'll step aside. We'll do a little 411 when we come back after this. It's Q Sports Talk. It is ESPN Radio. 